today the index list method in Python. So let's start with a look at the docs. So it says that we'll be returning a zero based index. And what that means is we're just going to start at the number zero. So zero represents the first index, one re represents the second index, etc. Just standard slice notation. And it says that it'll raise a value error if there is no such item. So if you try to search for an item that does not exist, uh, you will get a value error, which is a hard error. And this is something that you want to be avoid, which is why we're pointing it out right in the beginning. The other thing worth mentioning is that we're going to return the index of the first item. In other words, the first occurrence in the list. So if there's more than one occurrence of the item, uh, it's only going to return the first index of it. So the first time that that item occurs. And if you want to check later occurrences, that's where these optional arguments are going to come into play. Now here at the bottom, what it's talking about is how the start and the end arguments are basically, they basically work the same way as slice notation. And the index that's being returned is basically relative to the beginning of the full sequence, not from the sliced uh, smaller subsequence or sublist. And uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like now. We're going to open up our terminal and we're going to start messing around with the index list method. So what we're going to do is create a list of strings or different values. So I'm going to do cat dog uh, cat and uh, one, two, three. <laughs> and there's a particular reason that I added two, uh, two items that are the same. So we have two cat strings. And the reason for that is if we do a dot index and we pass cat to it, we're going to get the index zero because like I said from the docs, we are going to be returning the first occurrence. So of course, uh, at position zero is the first occurrence of cat. So this second occurrence of cat uh, is not going to be represented uh, in what we are looking at here. Now just continuing our discussion, what do you think is going to happen if I pass dog to index? Well, uh, pretty straightforward. If I pass dog here, we're going to get index of one. And what do you think is going to happen if I pass, say, one, two, three? Well, we're going to get three. And the reason for that is if you did A, and you can check this, right? You can do A3 and see that that returns one, two, three. Same way, we could do A0 and see that that returns cat. So basically, the index is just a way of checking, it's just a, another way of checking this index. So now you may be wondering, okay, well, since we have two occurrences of cat, how could I potentially check uh, the index of that second occurrence of cat, or just basically later occurrences of cat? And this is where we're going to get into the optional arguments. So what we're going to do is we could do uh, a dot index and again we'll pass cat to it but now we can start to get into our optional arguments which we know to be start and end. So since we know that the first occurrence is at zero let's actually start at one. So we're ignoring that first uh, index, we're ignoring the position zero in our list and when we run this we're going to see that that second occurrence of cat is at position two. So this is position two. And we can check that again. A2 is cat. And uh, since we are ignoring that first index, or since we uh, didn't start at zero, right? If we start at zero, then we'll get position zero. If we start at one, then we'll get position two, because that will be the first occurrence of cat uh, starting at position one. The next thing I want to show you guys is the end optional arg. And so what we're going to do is create a new list and we're going to have a bunch of the same value. And what I want to do is just do a whole bunch of 33s and this will make sense in a second. So here we actually have four instances of the value 33. And so again, of course, we can check that a0 is 33, uh, a1 is 1, uh, a2 is 33, and since we have seven values, I think, 
Uh, if we do a six, of course, that'll be 33 as well. So since we have all these occurrences of 33, uh, now we can mess around a little bit with the start and end variables in our index. So let's say we started with position two. Well, when we run that, we can see that it'll return two. It'll return this index. And of course, if we started at say uh, three, then we're gonna get three. And if we started at four, uh, that would normally be this, but that's not 33 and that's not 33. It's that last value that's 33. So we're gonna start at position four and see that after position four, um, the first occurrence of 33 is at position six. Now let's say we added our end argument. So let's say we added five here. So we wanted to check if it's between four and five. And that's when we'll get the value error saying that it's not in the list. And if we did position six, again, we'll get the value error. And if we do position seven, only then will we get our value. Because uh, if we do position six, well, um, 33 is not between four and six, it actually is six. So we'd have to do seven, um, or if we did eight, uh, or we could do 10 even. So between four and 10, there is a value at position six. Does that make sense? And of course we could change this four to a two and we're gonna get a different value. We're gonna get a different instance or a different index placing of that 33. So I hope this is starting to make sense how uh, we're basically using slice no notation to check different substrings. And we can even double check this by doing say something like 210 here, doing that slice notation and see how we get that substring. So you can see how two to 10 is the equivalent of this. Uh, of course, we could do something like, I don't know, zero to four and we're returning this substring. So that if in this case we did our 33 and we did say zero to four, we can see the first index is at zero. And if we did three to four, our first index is at three. So basically, hopefully making sense that uh, these start and end arguments are very much equivalent to slice notation, uh, which we can do to get sublists of an original list. And just make sure that our syntax is correct, where in slice notation, you need to be using that semicolon, uh, but with index, we're using commas. And it's that same idea, grabbing those substrings or sublists. I think the last thing I want to show you guys is that we can check any object. And a lot of the uh, tutorials or examples you'll see online are basically all numbers. It's just all one, two, cat, basically. It's all numbers. But you need to know that we can pass any other type. So we could have a sublist here um, or, or a nested list, you could call it. We could have a dictionary uh, with some values, right? So, um, get this just down to one line. So here we have a list that has four different data types. We have numbers, we have strings, we have a list, and we have a dictionary. And when you do a.index, of course, uh, you could check numbers, of course, you can check strings. And basically, I just wanted to mention that you can also check, say, lists. So here we're passing a list with three, uh, which we know we have. And if we pass a list with four, which we know we do not have, that's when you're gonna get that value error. We also know that we have a dictionary in here. So let me just grab it uh, to make this a little bit easier. And so we could do index and we can pass our dictionary and we can see that that dictionary is at position four. So basically passing all different types of objects, any size that you want, um, the index list method is pretty flexible in that regard. So in conclusion, if you want to check the position of an element, the index a list method is the way that you're gonna wanna do it. So basically with slice notation, uh, that's when you wanna actually grab those values, but before you use slice notation, you might wanna check where it actually is, right? And you could even assign it as a variable. So let's just say uh, we want position of the two, right? So you could do a dot index two, and we can check that position two 
is 1. So the index of 1. And then you could even do something like a position 2 and pass our variable to the slice notation to get our value. So you can see how that we've actually used the index to, to build it up and to access our values through slice notation in a dynamic way uh, from having created a variable. So this is a, an excellent use case, an excellent example of how the index list method might be used in a real world application, checking if it exists and then passing it to the string notation or the slice notation. So that's pretty much it. I think the last thing I want to do uh, is create a new list with the string. Thanks for watching. And we can copy this. Uh, we have our variable b, and we can do b.index and check where thanks for watching is in our list. It's at position zero. This is the index list method. Thanks for watching.